Welcome to the Church with No Walls podcast. All right, welcome to this week's podcast. My name is Ryan Dearbone, and this week I am joined by Dustin Bratcher. Dustin is the tech guy for Liberty Methodist Church in Beaver Dam, Kentucky. Uh, Dustin, it's great to have you here on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. And Dustin, it's it's funny we we happened to meet uh, while at the Civic Imagination Project. We were having a um, wrap up session with some of some of us uh, folks, as they call us. We were presenting some of our projects, and this is mine. Uh, this podcast that talks about religion and social media and how we kind of navigated through the pandemic. You came up uh, afterwards, and we started talking, and I was just I was fascinated by the story that you told about how you guys got through the pandemic, because I had been so focused and had been thinking so much about how technology was kind of the, 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 the thing that got a lot of churches through, but the way you guys did it was equally as effective, but it was also still a use of technology without necessarily going down the social media rabbit hole. So, um, you know, just kind of, first of all, tell me a little bit before, before the pandemic, before everything started shutting down and everything was kind of off limits as far as being inside sanctuary. How did your church, what was the technology uh, like at your church? Did you guys have a social media presence prior to uh, the pandemic? And if so, what did that look like? Uh, we didn't have much of a social media presence. I think everybody's always had a Facebook page. Um, but we kind of started one. Honestly, I think we we had one, obviously, because everyone, like I said, everyone just started one. But we really didn't use it all that much. It was kind of one of those things. Uh, a lot of people that, that get into social media or organizations, they'll get in it hot and heavy. And then they realize it's like uh, sometimes you see, well, it's not that we don't have that many followers. And. Uh, everybody's always got things that they're doing. So sometimes it'll fall by the wayside if you don't have this like instant gratification. Oh, this, this extra thing that we're doing works. Uh, but uh, other than that, you know, as far as technology we had in the church, it was just, we had a microphone system and that was it. Uh, but for social media, it was, we had a page and we would share th things every now and again. It was one of those things where, oh, if we think about it, we'll do it. But then once COVID happened, obviously, uh, social media is almost all you have. Uh, and for us, uh, most of the followers we had were literally just the members of the church. Uh, so that was that was how we we kind of used it. Almost it was almost like just a communication system for uh, the members of our church and everyone else could see it if they wanted to. <laughs> and about how many members, are, how many members does your church have? Uh, we probably uh, only have like 20 will be a big, big Sunday for us. Uh, we're just a small church, uh, a lot of different families. We have a few that have come in that weren't related, but it was uh, a lot of it was just literally uh, there was a time where I'm a, I was almost related to literally everyone, <laughs> everyone that was there <laughs> in some way. Uh, but there, there was probably two or three families where everybody that was at church was related to them somehow. So we're, we're a, a community church uh, that was that was what it was. In Ohio County, I was talking to somebody about it just today. Ohio County, we're the fifth largest county in the state of Kentucky. Land-wise, we're 600 square miles and we're less than 24,000 people. And I think there are at least 38 churches in Ohio County. So, you know, not the, there, are, there are a few that are obviously big, huge churches, like Beaverdown Baptist Church is a big church, uh, and there are a few others, but most churches are kind of like ours. It's a community church. There's some churches here that literally it's just one family. They might have four or five people in church every day, uh, but that's, that's about it. But we're just a small church, been around for 100, almost 170 years, wow. and wow. that's just how that's how all the churches around here kind of are. So now when the government governor started making the mandate and people at basically churches shut down, churches yeah. shut down here. No, nobody was allowed in church. Things were not going to services were not going to happen as they had been for, you know, as, as long as we can remember. What mm -hmm. was what was the initial thought that you all had? What was the initial conversations? How did you guys navigate? OK, 
where do we go from here? Because now we're in a search, search situation, excuse me, that we've never had before. Where do we go from here? What, what was that like? Well, I, I think we had, I had always just me personally, I had always thought about, you know, if we could live stream or not live stream. Uh, but whenever it happened for us, we might've missed two Sundays if memory serves, maybe three, because it was like, we shut down. It was like, okay, we're not having church, but of course all of this was new. So we just kind of wondered, well, is this, you know, how long is this going to last, you know, and, and whatnot. But, uh, we were as a church, we were all kind of fairly wary of it all. I mean, we didn't, we didn't want anybody to get sick because obviously it was, this is all new to everybody. But there was probably, probably in the second week, it was like, okay, we're literally not going to be able to come back to the building and it might be for a year, you know, maybe longer that we're just never going to be inside the building. And so uh, that was just kind of when with, with, I've got all kinds of cameras and recording equipment and, and things that, that we use. So I just kind of had it in my head. It's like, okay, uh, we have a, we, we had a sister church at the time in Centertown, Centertown Methodist church. And so I think I told you when we, we talked, they have zero internet down there. Like if you're down there and your car breaks down, you might not be able to call out, you know, it's, it's that there, there's no cell phone signal, no internet, no nothing. And so it was kind of a situation. It's like, well, if we live stream our service, then we're kind of leaving them out. So I was trying to think, how is it that we can incorporate them? So for, for me, I talked to our pastor, brother, Mike Atkins, he's since retired. Uh, and it was just like, can we get together Tuesday or Wednesday and record your sermon? And that was kind of how, it, it all kind of started at first it was we've got to figure out a way to keep you know to keep engaged with everyone and so we started recording the sermons and i would essentially for the two churches because he had he would have their worship service at 9 30 and then that would give him when it was over that would give him about 30 minutes to get to to our church and then he'd do it all over again and so uh essentially what I did was we were, we would record his sermon and then I would, uh, center town had their own Facebook page as well. And you, and we had a combined YouTube, but we've since split those YouTubes up. Um, but we would, I would brand it. It was center town, United Methodist church and brother Mike Atkins. And, and it was all branded for them that would premiere on Facebook at nine 30. And then ours would premiere at 11 o'clock because that's when we had our worship service so that everybody could at least stay in the habit of worship service at 930, worship service at 11, and we're going to be here. Uh, so that was how we went with the video aspect of it, simply because, and I, I kept, you know, Brother Mike and I would, would talk all the time about it. It was like, I don't want to leave Centertown out because there's, they're just never going to be able to live stream until all the the internet gets gets where it's going to be we're all going to have internet eventually just because of covid really but uh they uh, we just didn't want to leave them out in the cold uh so that was how we went went with that uh the step further that we went was you know we were talking about all this technology and this is a little bit of technology but it's 100 year old technology <laughs> right uh we wanted to, we wanted to, if we could keep meeting somehow. And so we wanted to see if we could figure out parking lot services. Uh, and I think I mentioned to you, you know, I, I never really thought about until you had talked about uh, on, on that wrap up of your podcast about how, you know, churches in the cities, you know, could, could have church like we did because we've got this big parking lot you know, everybody that comes to church could drive separately and we'd be good. And so I found a little uh, FM transmitter uh, that was mobile. It's called, it's actually called a mobile black box. Uh, and it was, I think it was about a hundred dollars or something. 
And so, uh, and then I bought, I think I already had a microphone, a Rode Wireless Go microphone, which is the handiest thing ever. We, we've been having, we're in between pastures and we've had a half a dozen different pastures the last uh, several months. And every one of them is just amazed at this little microphone that I've had for two or three years. And uh, that's what we use. It's a wireless microphone, little bitty transmitter, little bitty microphone uh, that you just clip on. And, and the FM transmitter had two inputs. So I'd put the microphone in one and then I would run music off of my phone and everyone would tune to 107.7. You could pick whatever frequency you wanted. Uh, and it covers about 400 square feet, you know, in a radius, 400 radius. Uh, and we would all sit in our cars and we would listen and, and have music. And uh, he would stand out sometimes in the cold. Sometimes it was raining a little bit. Uh, and I, I think one of the first times we did it, we have a bunch of uh, uh, oak trees uh, around around our, our church. And I think the first time we had service, he stood out in the middle of the parking lot and had he wanted to wear a robe that that week and he put a big robe on and that sun was beating down. And after it was over, he said, I'll never wear that robe ever again. And I'm going to preach over there under that shade tree. So, <laughs> but that was how, that was the thing that, that we got. It probably took about a month to, for me to find an FM transmitter. I mean, I knew they were out there, but most of them were, you know, bigger than what we needed. Uh, and what was required and a little bit more expensive. I always like doing things on the cheap. And so uh, this thing that I found, I was like, this is handy. It's mobile. And when we can go back in the church, I can still plug it in to the wall on the USB. And then if people, and that's what we did as things started relaxing a little bit. Uh, if anybody didn't want to come inside, we would, I would just plug the FM transmitter up and they could still, still sit out in their car and still be a part of the service. Uh, and that was a thing because I think what we mentioned, there was a time where not, I mean, we had members of the church that lost family members to COVID. Uh, my, my neighbor and cousin uh, up the road passed away from COVID uh, and her husband almost did. Yeah. And so we all in the community were a small community and we had, I think we had about a hundred deaths total over the course of, you know, when it was really hot, but you know, there wasn't anybody that didn't know someone that had died from COVID. So it wasn't real hard for us to justify like, Hey, this is something that we've got to, we've got to be really careful about, but we still wanted to try to reach everybody every way that we could. And still, as I mentioned, to keep in the habit of still coming to church because once it's over, you know, we had a few that that uh, lived uh, a couple of counties away that would drive in every week for church. But then they were like, well, if I'm just going to drive in and sit, sit in my truck and then drive home, you know, that's, you know, 100 miles round trip. That's not something that they really wanted to do. So there there were some that just haven't come back. And we were trying to mitigate that as much as we could uh, through the parking lot services and everything that we did. And then and you kind of touched on that, especially with being a a small church. Every it, it, not that every church, every member doesn't count, but especially with a small church, oh, yes. every member counts yeah. because, you know, you've got offering that you need to take up. You need things to keep the church functioning. And so if mm -hmm. you were to lose, you know, even a handful of members, I, I'm sure that affects the overall productivity of the church in terms of of keeping itself going correct yes that that was that was a big deal that that's that's our church admittedly we're, we're like a whole lot of churches we're we're a, an aging church i think i told you i'm 45 years old i'm the youngest member at our church and so it, it's it's a situation where we've we we need members and we're always hoping to to reach out and get new members but for for me personally, I just whenever COVID started, it was just me racking my brain. We've got to keep going because if we don't, you know, everybody, you know, everybody can get complacent. And when we're all sitting at home for two years, you start to form habits. And I wanted to, you know, uh, in hindsight, I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. But in hindsight, this was a good way that we could keep everybody in the habit of, hey, we've got, 
we've got church on Sunday morning. Uh, whether it be we're going to drive out and we're going to we're going to go uh, because the thing about being out in the parking lot is it, we could all keep our distance and we could talk and we could socialize. And for a lot of folks, especially you know, we've got we've got some members that are pushing ninety. Uh, now they're still up and active and still drive out to church, but a lot of times that's their, that's their social activity for the week, you know? Uh, uh, so we wanted to make sure that if we had the, the parking lot, we could all keep distance. We would all wear masks, but we could go, you know, uh, it wouldn't be everybody would get out, but we would all, you know, someone would get out and, oh, I haven't talked to this person in a while, so I'm going to go talk to them. Uh, and it turned into a social hour and then we'd have church service. <laughs> nice, nice. And did you end up getting uh, maybe other people that hadn't come to your church attending be- through the parking lot services because they were able to come to you all and maybe they couldn't have gone to their other church because their church was was shut down and maybe wasn't doing anything? Not particularly, but I think as I as I told you when we spoke, there were several churches around here that just ignored it. And there were there were some churches that lost some prominent members to COVID. Uh, and it was it was kind of a mixed bag. But I think a lot of churches uh, around here all started live streaming if they could. Everybody, everybody started, you know, it wasn't that I don't think there was a single church that was like, well, we're shut down. And that's that. Uh, and as I said, we're we're a rural community. So there are a lot of churches that probably couldn't live stream. I, I don't know, but uh, like I know out, out in Rosine, I, there's no internet service out there. And the other churches in Centertown would probably have that have trouble too. But I think, I think several of them did do parking lot services, but it was everybody just everybody for themselves at that point. It, it's everybody's got to do what you got to do. Uh, and like, like you mentioned, uh, or like was mentioned in the, the, I think the trailer for your podcast, there are so many that, that could watch live streams of four or five different services if they wanted to, uh, just from their home. If, and that was what my mother did. She's 77 years old and she just didn't want to go out. Cause that was the one thing about doing a parking lot service is if it was cold, you know, especially like my, my, my truck, I've got a big Tahoe. And you can't let that thing sit in the idle and blow heat on you while while the service is going on because it's just too loud. Right. And uh, so not everybody couldn't just sit there having their engine running. So uh, a lot of them, if it was 30 degrees outside, they didn't want to go out to church that day. Uh, so, but we just tried to keep it to where uh, we were, we were servicing the the members that we had. Uh, and we, and I don't really know that anybody was really inviting. I, I, I mean, as sad as it is to say, I don't think that there were very many people inviting anybody anywhere during COVID. Uh, we, you know, I think it, we, we promoted that we were having parking lot services, but it was just, if social media wasn't reaching them, a lot of us just weren't, there just wasn't a lot of people getting together and doing things. And that was just the nature of, you know, we were all there. That was what COVID was. So there wasn't a lot of socializing going on. So when you were, because you mentioned earlier that you that you had done basically two videos, one for, for yourselves and one for Centertown. Yeah. So as you guys were putting those together, uh, was there ever, a, you know, and you said everybody else is doing live streaming. Were you looking at, okay, how can we make ours look better than theirs, different than theirs, or was it just a matter of let's get it recorded so that way people have something? And and, and as far as the, the 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 quality value, let's just have something for people to watch that gives them a service if they are uh, on so or if they are online to watch. Uh for the most part every week it was just our uh, pastor in front of a lectern, we didn't even get behind the pulpit. It was because this, it was just different. Actually, the lighting was better <laughs> whenever we could move everything over. But uh, really, I, I started, we we would record the sermons and we would essentially, we would essentially run through the service, obviously minus offering because, you know, but we would go through the service and uh, for music, we had, I have old, my, in our our church, there was 
my mother and grandfather and aunt and her father had a gospel singing group called the dads and daughters. They were all dads or all daughters or granddads and granddaughters. And so we, I have a bunch of audio recordings and video recordings of them that are 30 years old. And I guess, I guess I get it from my, my uh, papa uh, who led the group. Uh, he just recorded with whatever he had. Like if he just had a tape recorder or a little boom box, I'm showing my age uh, back in the day, he would just start recording and he would record wherever they went. And we, years ago, I, for and uh, telling my age a little more, I made a CD for every one of the dads and daughters songs uh, and included a Christmas song. It was for Christmas that year. <laughs> and um, so I would mix in, in the video, a video of them singing a song. Now my, the list of songs I have is limited. It might be 25 or 30, uh, but we all love them because we all knew everybody that was in that group. Most of them have passed away with the exception of my mother uh, and my cousin that was in it, but she was, she was in elementary school when she was in it. So, uh, but uh, that was also what we did when we went back into church. You know, uh, I've got, I've actually got photos where we had roped off every other row in our church because you wanted to keep your distance and even during church when we couldn't sing i would play the audio from my phone over the sound system uh which also had the fm transmitter to it so that was what we did for just a regular everyday service uh but for instance uh we did uh a few actual live streams at our church with limited folks uh like we did a, a tenebrae service, a Good Friday service, which is the, uh, oh, I, I don't want to say festival, but it was darkness, tenebrae service. You can look it up. Uh, we have, it's where, where you have uh, a line of candles and you read off different different uh, verses for Good Friday and put a candle out every time you go. And uh, it's a really neat service, but it was something that just myself and the pastor could do so we didn't have to involve really anybody else uh and then uh we would do some some different things for christmas and and especially like this time of year uh in the methodist church we do hanging of the greens if you're if you're familiar which is yeah. where it's just this big service of decorating the church and we absolutely love it it's probably my favorite service of the year and we didn't get to do that and boy it hurt because i just love it and that is that is you know, you're, that's Christmas. Like you're starting Christmas, Christmas season starts with the hanging of the greens. And so, uh, that was something that we, I think we, we kind of changed things up and had a few people come in and would read off the parts and I would just record them. Sometimes they would just record them whenever they could do it and then just edit it into the, into the video. Uh, but there were a few live streams that we did for special services. I remember doing the tenebrae service, uh, once or twice, uh, and, that was that was the only thing that we really did to dress things up, uh, but it was usually throwing throwing the videos of the songs that we had since we couldn't sing. Uh, but it's always nice to have good music at your at your fingertips. Absolutely. So now you kind of touched on the reintegration back into the sanctuary. Everything seems to be you know now we've moved away largely from the pandemic. We're kind of back into a more normalcy. What does what does it look like now, technology wise? Have you guys kept on with a a a live stream presence here and there? Have you guys guys kind of gone back to uh, what it looked like before? Where are you guys at now? Right now, I, I think I, I I talked with you Friday night about you know for me. I was into, I was putting a lot of work in yeah. and I, I think I told you there, there just sometimes it gets to the point where you have it kind of in your head, especially in a small church like ours, that if you don't do it, it won't get done. Right. And I kind of took a step back a little bit and we've stopped live streaming because I think, I think I mentioned we're, we're, we're in the middle of looking for a pastor and uh, we actually have one that's going to finish out at least the rest of this year and I'm going to talk to him literally next week about starting the live streams back up uh, just to take advantage of, of this continuity that we have, because it's, it's sometimes it's hard when you're having to have a new person in every single time. Uh, and some of them might not be, you know, uh, uh, 
as interested or don't, just don't want to live stream because sometimes when that red light comes on, it's a little more than people can handle. <laughs> uh, and thankfully, I, I told I told my my pastor brother Mike whenever we did it, he took to it like a duck to water. I couldn't believe it. I was like, sometimes said, sometimes you turn this on and people it's almost like they forget how to speak when they realize that you're recording it. But Absolutely. he didn't he didn't miss a beat. Uh, and so now that we have a, have a, an interim pastor, that's going to finish out through the Christmas season, uh, we're, we're really looking forward to having that continuity and to work with him, uh, on some things that he would want to do for Christmas, maybe something new. Uh, but yeah, that we're, we're going to start hopefully, uh, if he, if he wants to, if he doesn't want to, then we'll, we'll hang back, but we might start doing some more live streaming because like I said, it just got, I, I told I told the people of the church that I, I apologize, but I was like I haven't sit and just enjoyed a service for over two years every Sunday. I think I missed one. Well, I told you last last uh, uh, December I got COVID, right. and that took us. And and then my mother got it, my brother got it, and that took us out of basically all of December, with the exception of the first Sunday. So we didn't uh, we didn't have Christmas, we didn't do anything. And so I just kind of told them I haven't enjoyed a service in over two years, having only missed up up to that point, up to that last December, maybe two Sundays. And so that's just because you're always, I, some people can do it. I've known people that just do it all the time, but if I'm in it and I'm, especially if I'm live streaming, it's just a constant, is it, is it, is it still going out? Do I, I, I keep a, keep a watch on, the data stream to make sure that if it starts dipping that I might move around so I can get a better connection or something. It's just a constant checklist. You're going over a checklist to make sure everything's going as smoothly as it can. And so we, I just told him, I was like, if we can, I'd like to step back for a little bit just so I still turn the mic on and, and do sound, but that's just a matter of making sure that the, the mic's not on when the pastor's talking to somebody, you know, privately or whatever. Uh, but for me, I, I just want to take a step back so I could enjoy some sermons for a little bit and not have to uh, constantly. I mean, it, it almost turned into work, you know, uh, between the recording, the videos and editing them. And I, I hope there's some some people that are listening to this in their church and think, I wonder if this person that's been running our audio for the last five years would like to have a break or <laughs> something like that. Keep that in mind, because it doesn't hurt to have other people that can 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 shoulder the load on some of these things. Well, you're absolutely correct. Cause uh, I mean, I was telling you, you know, I'm the media guy for our church and um, I've got, I've, I've ended up getting a couple people, at least one other person that directs for me. So we alternate weeks or we do twice a month, but there was a time where I told our pastor, cause he, he came in during the, back into the pandemic and I sat down I finally had a week and I sat down in the in the front of the church because uh, we have a balcony and upstairs where our all of our media equipment sat and I told him this is the first time I've actually sat down down here on the floor and watched you preach because every other time I've been upstairs so that was literally an experience yeah. for me to actually watch him preach like everybody else would, because I'm usually, like you said, upstairs. I'm looking at the the um, our powerpoints, making sure that they're fit fitting with him, that the audio is correct, that all these these other things that nobody else is even thinking of is working. And so, yeah, so I, you know, I as we were talking, I definitely want 100 percent understand, and I'm pretty sure there are are going to be people who listen to this and they say, hey, either I'm that person. Who who has been doing the media for so long yeah. that I don't kn- I don't know what it's like to be just a a member or somebody else might say hey you know what I might want to join in the media ministry to help out the person who is shouldering that load and doing doing all that and not even you don't even really think about it so yeah I mean it's a it it is it is a labor of love I, that's one thing I've learned it is a labor of love if you do it you know you're doing yeah. it because you want the word to get out you want people to be able to enjoy the church service and the church experience, even if it's from, from afar. Yeah, that was, like I said, that was always the thing for me when it all started is how can we keep this going and not just lose people because you're out. Uh, Just, we can't gather, especially like I said, from especially small churches like ours and dozens of others in the County. If you're not meeting uh, kind of another thing that we had to start thinking about was 
if people wanted to send their offering somehow, if you're not meeting with them, you know, there, there were some that would mail checks, but we set up a PayPal and that way people could send, send money that way if they wanted to and not, and, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Not many people used it, but we were having parking lot services. So essentially the way that we worked that at the end was we just set up a, a, a bucket on a stool and everybody would drive by and just drop it off as they left. And that was, that was the easiest way for us to do it. Nobody had to come around to your car and, you know, we did it about as safe as we could possibly do it. Yeah. So now since you said, like you said, this, your church is an older church and in a lot of ways, my church is an older church too. And as provided we don't go through another pandemic in another, you know, 10, 15 years from now, a lot of this will be forgotten. And the things that we've, had to go through and navigate will be a a distant memory. So let's say just in case something like this should happen again, do you feel like you guys will be in a better spot? You know, there'll be less, oh, how do we tackle this? There'll kind of already be a bit of a plan of action because you've done this before. You've done something similar to this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, like I said, we, we started, you know, we started, I started kind of brainstorming as we went, but like I said, we were mostly kind of sitting back thinking, well, let's see where this goes. Even after we were told that we couldn't meet and had to shut down. But now, I mean, now if it happened all over again, we wouldn't miss a Sunday. I mean, we just, we just go, we go right back into it. It, it would be that, that quick and that easy. Uh, that was the kind of the thing, the thing that that I live streamed with once we started live streaming. It's a camera called a Mevo camera. And I would hazard to say, if you have spoken to 10 churches, I would bet five of them are using the Mevo camera Absolutely. unless they've just got a huge media, you know, uh, setup because you could literally set, you could literally set it up and run it off your phone instantly. Yeah. And that was what I did. Uh, to, I did that to record because like I think I told you, while the uh, uh, brother Mike was doing the sermon, you know, I would use my phone because I could keep it near me and I would just mark time if we wanted to edit anything. And if he ever stumbled on something or be like, let me read this again, I would just say, just go back to your last sentence and I'll edit it out. So uh, now, I mean, I just had these things around, but even if we had just a cell phone, we could get it done. Uh, and I think now, you'd be hard pressed to find any church that wouldn't be like, Oh, we'll never miss a Sunday. We could have another, you know, novel virus come through that we've never seen before. And if they call it off, we'll, we'll still get it done. And that was, that was what's so great about it. It, it got, it got everybody uh, almost kind of future proof in this aspect. Cause I don't, I don't know anybody, any church, no matter how big or small it is that doesn't have some sort of, you know, in live streaming or media uh, somehow connected to it. So uh, in that aspect, I think we're all kind of, kind of better uh, and a little more connected because of what COVID did uh, in terms of social media and, and live streaming and video and things of that nature. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to give you one more question before I let you go. So yeah. you, and you kind of tipped, you kind of touched on it with us all being more interconnected now because of, of, this with social media do you think now that this has changed changed the scope of religion because a lot of times religion for a lot of people was you know you were at your church you worshiped with your your members your your congregation every so often you maybe wouldn't worship with another church because you venture out somewhere maybe to mm -hmm. visit another church but for the most part it was pretty much connected to your sanctuary your church do you think that now having having social media and the ability to watch multiple services, the ability to get your word out to, to congregations and to people who normally would not see it because you're in Beaver Dam, Kentucky. Theoretically, you could get your services out to California if you wanted to, to Chicago, to other places in Kentucky. Do you, how do you think that changes the scope of what religion looks like now as opposed to what it did three or four years ago before a pandemic? I think really it, it from kind of like you said from a religious standpoint people can people i mean for lack of a better way of saying it, you could almost shop around you could almost be like hey let, let's see what this service is about because I, I actually had a friend that i worked with years ago when i was with the newspaper and radio station he would go to a different church in the county every week 
Like he, he literally just, and he enjoyed it. Uh, and I don't know that he was necessarily looking for a home church, but he just liked going to different churches, seeing different people. So from that kind of standpoint, I think there's a whole lot more, for lack of a better way, a religion out there to, to connect with people. And that's sometimes that kind of, kind of gets to whether it gets to different people's philosophies about it. It, because it's one thing to be able to watch church service. And I think like, like you mentioned, whenever we spoke that there are people that uh, are uh, connected to your church that are active in it, even though they're a state away, like they're not showing up on Sunday. Uh, that's kind of the, the, I guess probably the next hurdle is for churches that do have uh, a long distance member how do you keep them engaged uh, the way that you can when you come to the church building and there's things to do within that community? Uh, that's kind of the next hurdle is to, if you, if you are reaching out and have this outreach to people all across the country or the world, how is it that you keep them engaged and how do you make them a part of your church family from afar that's that that's a million dollar question really <laughs> because that that's to me that would be for me that would be really hard because i live i drove by my church on the way home i mean my church is quite literally within walking distance it's a good walk it might be a mile and a half but uh i don't know i keep i go because that's what i've always done i mean every at, there are very few Sundays that I've ever missed in my life uh, without going to the, going to my church. And it's, that's our community. That's our family. That's what we do. So from the technology aspect, it, it, it may, it allows you to cast your net wider, but then it's the big, the big issue is how, how do they get the same type of connection that you have when you get to church 20 minutes early, basically. So you can sit down and talk to people that you haven't seen that week. Uh, that's a, you know, just, and that's just something that's just popped into my head. How, how do you keep people engaged? Because a lot of times, sometimes if churches, you have new members come in and you don't want to, you don't want to throw them into a, a job just too quickly, but you still want them to be engaged. So they, so they feel like they're a part of it. Uh, and that's, that's the one thing that's really hard to do when you're watching it on, on your TV is you're seeing the service and not necessarily the social aspect and community of your church family. You're seeing what members of your church family are doing, but you don't get to sit out in the crowd uh, or hang out after church and talk about different things and what you liked about the service or people that you need to add to your prayer list. And, you know, uh, things like that, because I was always and something that I always was wary about when we were live streaming is not necessarily putting it out over the live stream like, hey, so and so's sick or so and so's got cancer and it doesn't look good, you know, because it was just a situation like it's one thing when we're talking amongst ourselves, but when literally anybody can see it and it's going to live on the Internet for as long as you leave it up there. Uh, you're putting you're putting that information that people might not necessarily want known to the world for lack right. of a better way. Uh, so, but that's kind of the thing. That's the community that you have, and that goes back, you know, uh, hundreds of years. It was it's a social. That's why uh, someone mentioned uh, in in my my the pastor we have at our church right now mentioned last week that a lot of people uh, didn't even con call a church a church. It was the meeting house. You know, yeah. and we, some will say, oh, we're, got, we're, got, we're going to Sunday meeting. And it wasn't that we were going to church. It was, even though it was church, that was where we met. That was, right. that was the, that way. And that's why we have so many churches in my county is because we have seven uh, incorporated cities and all these little dots and just dots on a map. But their church was the community hub. And that's the thing that technology 
you know, we don't quite know how to get there yet. Maybe it's virtual reality. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe uh, your church or another church can come up with a VR way where someone can walk in with a VR headset, and then, then instead of live streaming different cameras, they're whatever this person is seeing himself or herself, yeah. uh, what what they're experiencing in the crowd is the next thing to to get that sense of community from afar. I mean, that that sounds like that, you know, at one time that might have sounded like really foreign or alien. But that honestly, that sounds like that could be the next the next iteration, because if you want to go to your church or another church and you physically can't be there having some sort of AI or VR type of uh, experience that gives you the similar the similar feeling or the similar, I guess, uh, connection that you that you uh, might have had. So, I mean. As you say it, it hits my ears. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound like that's too far off. And 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 you know, obviously at the at the the event we were at, the girl who was sitting next to me, Madison, she she may be able to come up with a situation just yeah. like that. That may be something that you know, as I was as I was kind of joking, I could talk to her, and she may be able to come up with a way to create a virtual church experience that feels like you're sitting in your church from your couch but it feels the same with the vr headsets but that's yeah yeah that, that, that would be that would be something that, I, that I would actually amazing. i was just thinking right now you know the the mevo camera that i use uh or or a gopro or something like that as long as you were able to live stream wirelessly you could literally put it on a cap or something and just go meet everybody and go greet everybody and say hello and they would just be like well just remember you're not saying hello to me you're saying hello to whoever's here right uh and you might even have the same conversations that you would but at least it would give folks the sense that they're coming into the building they're seeing seeing their their friends and family that are around their church family and can experience what a person sitting in that pew is experiencing that would be kind of neat Absolutely. So we have been talking to Dustin Bratcher, who is the tech guy for the Liberty Methodist Church in Beaver Dam, Kentucky. Dustin, thank you for taking a few minutes to talk with me. This has been very, it's been fun. It's very been very interesting to learn from you and just, just to hear your church's story and kind of your side being being the the, the tech guy who who basically packaged it and put it all together. So it's been a it's been a pleasure. No, oh, thanks for having me. I, I... Whenever I went up to you at the at the the uh, wrap up for that we had on Friday, uh, like I told you, I, I never thought about how other churches did it because, and I always tell people we're, we're humans are creatures of their own experience, and right. it just never crossed my mind what uh, we were in downtown Bowling Green, and there's probably a half a dozen churches down there, and it's like, well, I wonder what all these people did because we had you know with our parking lot we had it set up to where. Everybody could just literally park in a semicircle around a tree and set up and do service. So uh, it, it, it's, it's been great talking to you because, like I said, just talking to you about what your, your church did and what other churches were doing and the fact that you turned it into a podcast. That's just that's great because I would have never thought about doing a deep dive into it. But there's a lot of churches and a lot of people out there that would find it really interesting. I know I did. Yeah, that's that's the hope so well i appreciate it and we will see you next time or we will not see you you will hear us next time on the podcast everyone take care <laughs>